Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll see how we can quickly recreate this nice reception table here in Revit. As you can see, this one here is actually a bit more complex than in the reference image, but the same principle you can use to create this same or even better reception tables. And the bonus is, it's fully parametric. If I now edit this family now, I can freely change its sizes if I really want to. So if this point is a bit too deep inside, I can bring it forward like that. And the whole system should update nicely. Here we go. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now and get tutorials like this every single day. Alright, let's get started. Let me close this project first. And also this family. We're starting again from the beginning. You can now go to New and choose to create a generic model adaptive family. This family is a bit of a hybrid between a traditional simple family and a conceptual mass. In here, you can do everything to do with mass modeling to create complex forms and objects. But you can also go up here to the Family Types tab and change this family to be of something like a furniture type. That means my counter table will always be classified under the correct category. Now, to start modeling, let's lay out some construction geometry. If I go to here now, we can create a rectangle just to show the overall zone that our counter table will occupy. If I go to 3D now, we can set this length to be maybe 5 meters and the depth can be 3 meters. We can now do an offset of maybe 900 over this way and that way. So I want my reception table to go along this direction and then turn this corner and it's going to end there. Let's now create some geometry points. If I go to here now, use the point tool. Make sure to set it to be drawn on a face. And now we can start following those lines to create the base of our triangular panels. Okay, something like that. You can see that when I draw my points, I make sure they don't snap to any of those lines. Otherwise, they will be locked to that line and I couldn't move them later on freely. Now that's done, we can now start connecting those points. Simply select them in pairs like this. Go up here and use this tool to connect them, like so. Looking great. Next step is to copy them up. So I will select them like so. Make sure we don't get the other lines that we don't need. And now we can switch to the front view and simply copy them up by a distance of your choice. For now, let's do one meter. Here we go. We can now start changing the position of points that we just copied because otherwise it will be a very boring system. For example, I can change those points like this. Just move them along the axis. Make sure no points are sharing the same position as the one below. All right, it's time now to start creating our triangular faces. We can now select those like this, still in pairs, and keep connecting them. If you want to, you can also add additional points between the top and the bottom row. So let's say I want to have another point here to break down this big face a bit more. I can now go to here and place my point on this line. Next step, I need to select that point there and make it a geometry driving point. So click here now. You will notice it gets bigger now. That means if I now select this line and choose to dissolve it, that point will remain there. Otherwise, it would be deleted with the line. I can also make smaller triangles like this. Let's do another custom point here. So maybe over there. Select it again. Make point driving again. Get the line and then dissolve it. Alright, now we have the framework for our amazing counter table. 
we can now start creating surfaces from those lines. Let's begin from the top left corner. We can now select the base lines from before and delete them. We don't need them anymore. Next step, select everything here like this. We go to filter and only get lines. We can then go to properties and make them into reference lines. And now they are green and have those funny surfaces around them. That's how we know it's working. Next step to create surfaces, simply select each group of three lines and do great form. So for example here, I can get these three, do great form and choose to make a surface, not an extrusion. Repeat that a few more times until you have the full system available. Very nice. Even now you can see if I now select one of those points and then move it, the whole system should update nicely as well. So to complete this table, let's get the top face and the side faces done. To do the top face, simply get this point and I can copy it along this axis by maybe 750. Let's do the same over here. This time copy this along the other axis. I can now copy this one over there as well. And this one over here. Now I think you know where I'm going with this. We can now connect those two along with those two, those two as well. And finally these two. Let's turn those lines, the new ones, into reference lines. Like that. And now we need to find out the intersection between those two lines. Let's place a new point on one of them first. Do new point on face and put it here. I can now select this and then choose to host it by intersection. Click here now and then click on the other line. Now it's there where those lines intersect. I can now get this point and connect it with this other one here. One more time from this other point to here. Now I can delete this point. Don't need that anymore. And the same here, this one can go too. We can now get those two lines and make sure they are also reference lines. Here we go. Now it's a bit hard to see, so let me get those lines and then do isolate category. Now it's easy for me to go to this viewpoint and get all those lines on top. I can now simply create form and choose to make this time an extrusion. We can give it a depth of maybe 25 mils for now. You don't see it because we have this category which is lines isolated. Let's reset the view now and the top face there. We can now create side faces as well. I'm going to get this point here, turn this view to a back view and here just copy it down by one meter because I know that's the distance at the beginning. Here we are. I can now connect those two like this and also these two points. Make sure the new lines are also reference lines. And now I can select the other two other lines on the opposite sides and do great form as an extrusion. We can now move this face forward and give this a thickness of 25. Very nice. Let's do the same now for this other end. Here we go. Now, feel free to create the bottom face following the same method we use to create the top one. I'll leave that to you. For now, let's assign some material parameters. We can now go to here, select the top face, and select as well the two side faces. These three objects, I can now go to properties and create a material parameter for them. Let's call this one base because that's a base material for this counter unit. I can now hide them just for now. 
And now it's super easy for me to do a cross window selection like this. Filter for only furniture items. These are the faces we created here, triangular faces. And now I can assign to here a second parameter called boards. Reset the view now, and it's almost ready. We can now save this with a good name. Let's say counter 2. And let's test it out in the real project. We can go to here, make a new project. Back to the family and load it into project number 1. Place it here. Now the first thing I'll do is to change those materials. So for the base, let's create something white. We can duplicate this one, call it white, and give it a good color. Now for the triangular faces, let's make them timber. Or wood. This one will do for now. Very nice. Now how about changing the parameters we need? If I go back to the family now. You can see if at any point you want to change the shape of those triangles, simply go back to the family here. Select the points you want to move and move it just like that. When you do so, the triangular faces and the top face will update because they are based from the same set of points. So it's fine for now. But maybe some of you will wonder, these faces, they don't have a thickness. Is that not very realistic? If you want to give them thickness, you need to use a different family. Let's go to File, New, Family. And this time we can create another adaptive generic model object. With this one, I can go and lay out three placement points. Select them like this and make them adaptive. We can then connect them in pairs. So 1, 2, 2 to 3, and 1 to 3. Let's make those lines reference lines as well. And now we can create three more points. So, first point on a work set, and then set the work set to be this horizontal plane at point number 1. Place the new point right on top of the point number 1 there. And you can then move it up like this. Let's do it two more times for point two and three. Now these three new points, I can also connect them in pairs, just like the points below. And when I go to here now, some points are higher than the rest. Let's get those points again. And under offset, give them the same value, maybe 50 for now. I can also, of course, turn this into a parameter called thickness because it will be the thickness of our 3D triangular panel. The three new lines, we can now turn them into reference lines. And once you have still them selected, get those three other lines as well. Six lines here can now allow you to create form. And then you have this triangular panel. We can now save it as try panel and then load it into our countertop family, family counter2. Now if you really want to give those thickness, you need to place them one by one again, but this time we have to use this adaptive panel family. So let's say I want to replace that one there, I can delete that surface, go to create component, and click three points to place my adaptive component, like that. Maybe 50 in thickness is a bit much. We can now give this maybe 20. But if I now turn to the other side, this panel, unlike those around it, has real thickness, as you can see. We can also, of course, go back to the family, select a geometry, go to properties, and assign a new parameter for controlling this material. Make it an instance parameter. We can now load this back into the counter 2 family. 
Now when I select it, I can link this parameter to the same one we're using for boards. Here we go. Continue to replace other panels and once you've done, load this family back into the project. Now obviously because I didn't replace them all, only one panel will have thickness. But as you can see, the same material is now showing there as well. Alright, so that's how we can create quickly this very nice family. If you like tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get new lessons every single day. For now, practice this new technique and I'll see you in the next lesson.